Good afternoon to Janice, Cal, Carrie, Ruth, and Melissa. Thank you for inviting me to say a few words today about Bob, one of America's finest sportsmen and business leaders. And most of all, as everyone here in the stadium can attest to, a great friend. I first got to know Bob over 20 years ago when he had that vision and determination to convince the NFL to return to Houston. I immediately saw, as other woods around, others around the league would, that Bob was a man of conviction, character, and compassion. He was a calm man, a man of great faith, faith in the traditional sense, but also faith in his community. What came through most of all, as everyone here knows, is Bob was not in it for himself. He wanted to return the NFL to Houston because of his tremendous loyalty to this community. He knew that bringing the NFL back would help show the world what an extraordinary place Houston is. And Houston's standing as one of America's leading cities is now beyond question. And I have to say that it also turned out pretty well for the NFL. In 1999, as the Secretary implied, the odds were definitely not in Houston's favor. I'm sure that any of Janice's or Bob's horses have faced longer odds. But there was a tough competition coming from Los Angeles and other cities. And many of the expert pundits believed that LA had the inside track. But Bob never wavered in his belief that Houston was the right choice. He was a homer for Houston, as he so fondly liked to say. And Bob knew that if he got the opportunity, he would make the NFL a success in Houston. And sitting here today, we know he was right. It is fitting that we are here in this magnificent building the stadium Bob built for the people of Houston and the Texans. The stadium has hosted two Super Bowls and is home to a model franchise that is riding a nine-game winning streak and, excuse me, coach, is almost certainly headed to the playoffs. And not to put any more pressure on you, coach, or the team, you know how much Bob wanted to win a Super Bowl. But as he demonstrated time and time again, Bob was never about himself. He rightfully put Janice, his wonderful wife of 61 years, and their family first. During his years in the NFL, he quickly became a respected leader among our ownership. Bob was incredibly generous with his time, and he served on and led numerous NFL committees, none more important than the NFL Finance Committee. As its chairman for almost 10 years, Bob devoted most of the, his time and effort to the committee's work. An almost unlimited amount of energy and focus. And he led it with integrity, principle, and effectiveness. Every owner knew that Bob would give honest advice and that he would address any issue in a fair and even-handed way. Expediency or situational ethics just weren't in his thought process. From my standpoint as commissioner, I always knew that I could count on Bob for good advice when we faced tough issues. Bob was calm and thoughtful. He did not like to joke around too much, but he always came up with a, a quip at the right moment to break the ease and the tension. But when there was a serious issue to think through, I knew that Bob was someone we could rely on. And more than just a voice, he did not hesitate to engage vigorously and personally. Bob quickly brought together Texas players and leaders of Houston's law enforcement community to talk about how they could work together to improve police community relations. He did the same thing in his beloved South Carolina. He took the time to listen 
to different perspectives, to learn about another person's point of view, and then try to find ways to unite people of goodwill together, rather than have them become further divided. He understood the special bond between the NFL teams, players, and fans. He witnessed this connection firsthand as he spent time talking to so many in this community and others. Bob frequently said that his father gave him this advice, that you can't go wrong by doing what's right. I can still hear him saying it. He surely made his father proud doing a lot of right things. Thousands of people here in Houston and around the country have benefited from his generosity. This has been a tough week and a tough few weeks for Houston and our nation. This community has lost two giants. And Janice, when President Bush talked about a thousand points of light, I'm pretty sure that you and Bob were who he had in mind. In fact, you were probably about a hundred of those thousand lights. Janice and Bob are the most generous people our country has ever known and have given more than $500 million to education, to literary, to scientific research, and to faith-based organizations. And those are the ones that people know about. There have been countless others that were entirely anonymous but meant so much to the lives of the people they touched. It is hard to capture what Bob has meant to so many of us. But I'd like to leave you with Bob's own words from his last interview that he did with NFL Films with Janice by his side. I'd like to think I'd be remembered as an honorable man, Bob said in his humble and warm voice, as a good Christian man, and that I always did things in a first-class manner and treated people honestly. I think that would be a good legacy. Bob, I'd say that you were all of that and so much more. You leave a remarkable legacy. Your family, your community, our league, and all of us are better for knowing you. Thank you, Bob.